The price to earnings or PE ratio is very important in analyzing a potential stock investment because it's one of the most widely regarded barometers of a company's value. And it's usually reported along with the company's stock price in the financial page listings. The major significance of the PE ratio is that it establishes a direct relationship between the bottom line of a company's operations, the net profit, and the stock price. So let's dig a little deeper. The PE ratio is of particular interest to investors in public businesses. The PE ratio gives you an idea of how much you're paying in the current price for stock shares for each dollar of earnings the net income being earned by the business. Remember that earnings prop up the market value of shares. The PE ratio is in a way a reality check on just how high the current market price is in relation to the underlying profit that the business is earning. Very high PE ratios are justified when investors think that the company's EPS or earnings per share has a lot of upside potential in the future. The P in PE stands for the stock's current price. The E is for earnings per share typically the most recent 12 month of earnings. The PE ratio is also referred to as the earnings multiple or just multiple. You calculate the PE ratio by dividing the price of the stock by earnings per share. If the price of the stock is $10 and the earnings per share are one, then the PE ratio is 10. If the stock price goes up to $35 per share and the earnings are unchanged, then the PE ratio is 35. The higher the PE, the more you pay for the company's earnings. So you might ask, why would you buy a stock in a company with a relatively high PE ratio instead of investing in another company with a lower PE ratio? Well, keep in mind that investors buy stocks based on expectations. They may bid up the price of the stock, therefore raising the stock's PE ratio because they feel that the company will have increased earnings in the near future. Maybe they feel that the company has great potential that will eventually make it more profitable. More profitability in turn has the beneficial impact on the stock price. The danger with a higher PE is that if the company doesn't achieve what they're hoping for, the high results, the stock price can fall because those results were priced in already. You should look at two types of PE ratios to get a balanced picture of the company's value. Firstly, the trailing PE ratio. The trailing PE relies on past performance by dividing the current share price by the total EPS earnings over the past 12 months. It's the most popular PE metric because it's the most objective. Some investors prefer to look at the trailing PE because they don't trust another person's earnings estimates. But the trailing PE also has some negatives mostly because a company's past performance doesn't signal future performance. The trailing PE ratio will change as the price of the company's stock moves because earnings are only released each quarter, while stocks trade day in day out. As a result, some investors prefer the forward PE. If the forward PE ratio is lower than the trailing PE ratio, it means analysts are expecting earnings to increase. If the forward PE is higher than the current PE ratio, analysts expect them to decrease. So we already talked about it a little bit, but secondly, we have the forward PE ratio. The forward or leading PE ratio uses future earnings guidance rather than trailing figures, sometimes called estimated price to earnings. This forward looking indicator is useful for comparing current earnings to future earnings and helps provide a clearer picture of what earnings will look like. However, there are also problems with the forward PE metric. Companies could underestimate earnings in order to beat the estimated PE when the next quarter earnings are announced. Other companies may overstate the estimate and later adjust it going into the next earnings announcement. Furthermore, external analysts may also provide estimates which may diverge from the company's estimates, creating confusion. Although this PE may seem preferred because it looks into the near future, it's still considered an estimate that may or may not prove to be accurate. Looking at the PE ratio offers a shortcut for investors asking the question, is this stock overvalued? As a general rule, the lower PE, the safer or more conservative the stock is. The reverse is the higher the PE ratio, the greater the risk. Over the last century, average PE ratios have fluctuated a fair bit. The PE ratio of the broad Australian share market has for the most part fluctuated between 10 and 20, with a long-term average of around 15. When share markets in the wider economy are doing well, investors tend to be more confident about the future earnings potential of companies, causing PE ratios to rise. 
Also, PE ratios vary from business to business, industry to industry, and year to year. One dollar of EPS may command only $12 market value for a mature business in a no growth industry, whereas a dollar of EPS for dynamic businesses in high growth industries may be rewarded with something like $35 market value per dollar of earnings or net income.